Good day. Today we're going to be focusing on creating a parametric 2D drawing inside AutoCAD. This is a new feature that came out just a few years ago was adding the ability to parametrically constrain your drawing. So let me talk a little bit about what parametrics is before we actually jump into the AutoCAD drawing and uh, creating the uh, parametrics. The idea behind parametrics is the ability to change the dimension to update the structure of the drawing. Meaning that if I had a dimension to an object like a circle and I change that value then the circle would change. Either the diameter of the circle would change or the position dimension that I edited would change and that circle would reflect the updated change of that dimension. So it's a little bit different than what we've done in the past with AutoCAD because inside AutoCAD you typically move the object and the dimensions would automatically update and make that modification. But here's the twist. We can use equations to make the changes happen. So if we want to uh, put in a basic algebraic equation based on data that we have about the drawing, we can use that to our advantage in the parametric equation environment. So there's some advantages to, to using the parametrics uh, plus then you can actually create just the one single dimension um, on a drawing that controls all the other dimensions related to the drawing itself. It's kind of a fun exercise to, to try to test. So that's the concept behind parametrics. The ability to change object shape by applying a dimension change as opposed to changing the physical object and the dimensions updating automatically which is the uh, older uh, way that AutoCAD had handled it. Alright so what we're going to do is create a really basic um, plate shape and then from this basic plate shape we're going to make some uh, parametric dimension modifications and we'll work from there. So. We'll get started. We'll create our do our four setup steps here really quick. First thing is units. We're going to set our decimal places to two decimal place precision. Uh, we'll choose OK. Object snap and polar. Polar being first. Five is our current setting. That's good. Five degrees is OK. We'll enable it. And then our second setting, which is next to polar which is object snaps. We'll make sure that endpoint, midpoint, center, uh, intersection, perpendicular are enabled. And again, you can go into the settings to see these as check marks instead. Or just a quick way to do it. And our last setting is layers. We're going to go ahead and create a couple of layers here. So um, this one's going to be an object layer. and we'll put a dimension layer in and we'll put a parametric excuse me dimension layer in and then we'll put a center line layer in we don't need a parametric dimension layer uh, we'll change some colors here so our object layer will be the uh, brownish color um, We'll put a dark green for dimensions. No, nope, we'll go with our standard purplish for dimensions and then dark green for the center. All right. We'll st oh, with the center lines, I forgot to set up the center line uh, information. So let's change our line type. Load a center to center line and select our center to center line. We'll do the same thing for object and we'll set the line weight to 0.5 millimeters for our line weights. All right, now we're good. Something just wasn't feeling right. We'll start with the center line. We'll draw a couple of center lines here. So I just arbitrarily drew a couple of center lines. We'll then offset them. Um, and, and this is how you normally create an object. Uh, you'd offset them and, and then create the positions of the object in that location. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to create the object shape and then we're just going to wing through it and then we'll add the parametric dimensions. So we're going to create a rectangle. 
So we're just going to draw a rectangle. Up, oh, wrong layer. Let's switch over to our object layer here. Then draw the rectangle. We'll use the fillet command and we'll right mouse click, choose radius, and we'll put in a uh, probably a 1.5 inch radius will work well. Let's see how well that looks. One there. That looks perfect. So we're going to put in, we can repeat the fillet. I just right mouse click there. We can choose repeat the fillet. I'll repeat and choose multiple. So I'll right mouse click again and then choose multiple. And that way I can select that in all the way around. Okay, so that's one object, that's one polyline when it's a uh, value like that. So with this being a polyline, what I can do is I can explode this by typing explode. And this will just break it back from a polyline into the lines and arcs that it originally was. Okay, so that's the advantage of using the rectangle is that it's a polyline. For our particular example, we're not going to worry too much about it. I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of circles here. So on each of the orientation locations, we're going to go ahead and create a circle that's a half inch diameter. And we're going to repeat that circle here. Notice that I didn't have to type it because it already knew that uh, circle diameter was a half inch. So um, that was automatic and we can create a couple more if you'd like. Why? Because it's just easy to do. You highlight the radius, find the center, left mouse click on the center, right mouse click and accept and choose enter. And our last circle we're going to make a little bit larger but I'm also going to make it off center. And so that way um, we'll make this one 1.5 inches. And it's definitely not in the center but there's a reason behind that. I could have made it close to the center but even my center lines are not truly centered so that becomes overall an issue. Okay so here we have our drawing and ultimately we're going to make and move the uh, the center hole into the center of the object and uh, coordinate this. Before I do that I'm going to go ahead and turn off my center line uh, layer just so you can see just the basic objects and let's get started with doing parametrics. So instead of going to the annotate and using basic dimensioning and if I change the position or the location of the object the dimension will update I'm going to force the object to my constraints by using parametric. Now there's an auto constraint feature with parametrics uh, under the parametric area. And what this does is this automatically constrains the object based on geometry information. So if I hit auto constrain and it's going to put in the same types of object snap style constraints that I need. So I choose auto constrain. It asks me to window around the object. So I'm going to window around all the features. Right mouse click and choose enter. And now it put a, a series of different constraints up. For example, we've got up here on this line, this line is parallel to the bottom. It's also horizontal. It has tangents at the ends of each of the circles. We have tangents here. We have a concentric circle based on the radius location. Now the one thing that's missing is that I've made all these circles exactly the same. So I can use the equals option under constraint and choose equal and then select the item. Once I've selected the item, I can select the other item that, I, that it's going to be equal with and those two items are now equal. I can do the same thing between here and here. So now this and this are equal and I can do the same thing from here to here. Now do I have to go back to the original each time? No, I could actually make each one of these equal but now each of these circles are equal so if one changes size they all change size. Those are the kind of things that um, I'd like to to move. Uh oh, but if we look this circle is tangent to this line and we don't want that to happen. So I actually want to select this and delete that particular constraint. So I did not want this to be tangent. So I can delete constraints off of here also. So I'm actually going to move this up just a little bit. Uh oh, it's still tangent. I need to 
right mouse click and delete that tangent constraint. Now I should be able to move it. So hitting the X won't delete it. You got to right mouse click on that constraint to delete it. And there we go. So we are able to move it. We're all set. Everything's good to go. So the constraints are there. And I can hide all the constraints at this point because we've added the equals. I've taken out a constraint that was there. Everything looks good. So I'm going to hide the constraints. The next area to the right is called parametrics. And this is where we get to add some basic dimensioning. So the first dimension I'm going to add is a linear dimension. And I'm going to add it from this endpoint. to that endpoint. So the so it's going to be based on the two endpoints. Now you might notice here that it says D1 equals 10.72. So it's telling me that the overall length of my object that I sketched out is 10.72 inches and it's going to be called dimension 1 or D1. Now I can change this and this is the this is the functionality of this. So if I wanted to make this 9 inches it's going to modify the, the overall size, which also means that my shape gets modified automatically. How neat is that? So now I can use the dimensions to control the actual shape of the object. I'll add another linear dimension. This one happens to be from, and you'll notice that I'm using the lines as opposed to the ends of the arc. So technically they're the same location, but I like to be working with those specifically. So this one's 5.95. We're going to go ahead and make this 4 inches. Uh oh, that's too tight. What am I going to do? I'll double click on it. When I double click on it, I'm able to edit it and I will make this 6 inches. So that's a much better orientation there. So the idea is if you mess up, you can always go back and make some adjustments on the fly. So we know that all these are equal. We know that this is 9 and 6. But before I do that, we're going to go ahead and show you how to put an equation in. So I'm going to go ahead and position this middle circle. So I'm going to use a linear dimension from the end point here. And notice the red circle. The red circle indicates that's the, the target connection point that I want to work with to the circle. And so that's going to tell me that it's 4.7313. Or 4 but theoretically, I want this to always be, so I just picked it and I highlighted the, the number, the numeric value. I would like this to be D1 divided by 2. So D1 is dimension 1 here. So whatever dimension 1 is, this is going to be half of dimension 1. When I hit the Enter key, it automatically adjusts it. Well, if I do the same thing for the point here to the center, and do another vertical and this is one half of D2 so it's D2 divided by 2 that auto automatically will always keep that circle dimension to the center so now we also have and when you do linear you also have horizontal and vertical so you can sp specifically tag it but I can also do diameter based and radius based and angular based dimension. So I'm going to do a diameter on the center circle. So the center circle is 3 inches. So the 3 inch diameter that I have, I'm going to make that a function of D1. So if I say it's going to be D1, hmm, so I'm going to put a parenthesis in. So just like mathematics, I can have order of operations by using parentheses. So I can say D1 divided by 4 plus D2 divided by 4. Now I have n I can go real quick here and figure this out, but it's going to be in the ballpark here a little bit larger than what we originally calculated it out as, but 
you can see what kind of equation I just built. I just built an equation with order of operations dealing with diameters. And it's all based on linear di diameter. So the, the radial diameter or the diametral diameter is now based on the linear distances of the overall size of the part. So as this gets bigger, the diameter of the, the center gasket gets bigger. We know that these are concentric and I can actually make this, a, I can make these a function of diameter 1. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new diameter dimension. So that's a 1 inch diameter currently. So I'm going to say that this is going to be DIA1 divided by 3. Hmm. Well, what if I said DIA1 divided by 4? How, how would that look? Oh, I like that much better. So now this is a function of the diameter 1. Notice that I didn't use D1 because D is for a linear dimension. DIA1 is the name of this circular dimension. So this is now a, a function of the center circle and it applies to all the outer edges. And I can even make the radius a function of that. So I can make this DIA2 times Hmm. 0.75. Let's see how that looks. Uh-oh. So what happened here is that this isn't equal to all the other ones. So what could I do? Well, I could go back and use the geometric constraint and say I want to make this arc equal to this arc and make that arc equal to the other arc and make this arc equal to this arc and so now they're all automatically updating again by themselves so even in the middle I can go back and change this now for your homework and for your project what I'd like you to do is create one of these parametric design drawings what I also need you to do is open up the function the parameters manager and what this tells me is all the different values that you have you can slide this over if you'd like, and your equations also show up. Your requirement is that you're going to have to create a drawing, create the drawing with equations and constraints. So what I really need is a screen capture of the drawing. You do not have to fully dimension it, but what I'm looking for is a screen capture of this particular project. So the goal is, is that you want to have a screen capture. How do you do a screen capture? You can hit the function in your print screen button, excuse me, you can hit the control in the print screen button on your screen. That will get your screen capture. You can paste it in Notepad, um, anything. You can just paste it into a uh, document or a uh, PowerPoint presentation, slide, whatever you might have. You could also um, paste it into a uh, image editing software, things like that. All I need is an image. You show me an image of your project with your equations built into it, you'll get the uh, appropriate credit. Have a great day and we'll be talking to you soon.